Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. One of my favorite videos to film on this channel, a Natasha Denona palette review. I'm going to be covering the brand new retro palette. If you want to hear my thoughts, see some comparisons with some other palettes, as well as see how I get this look, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan and I'm like a Natasha Denona stan. Literally review everything that she comes out with. Regardless though, as you know, I'm not afraid to say when we have some flops and when we have some hits. So far this year, I feel like Natasha's been on an upward trend here because for a while it was a little bit hit or miss. And I'm gonna start off this review by saying that this is a very good palette no duds in this palette, but let's talk about the details of the palette, a deeper dive in, all of that good stuff. So we have the Retro Eyeshadow Palette. This is $65. You can currently get this on the Natasha Denona website, Sephora and Beautylish. I personally picked this up yesterday on the app from Sephora. I did pay for expedited shipping, so it did come fast. I believe it's coming into stores at Sephora on the 9th. Lots of options and places to pick it up. So as we take a closer look into the packaging here, it's the typical midi packaging, very sturdy, nice, slim and sleek. We have a gorgeous kind of powder pink packaging. As always, there are these little holes in the back so you can push out the shades if you wish to rearrange the palette or put it in a different palette. This has a 24 month shelf life and is made in Italy. If you don't know, this palette was an inspiration from the mini retro palette which launched about a year and a half ago. And this one I think overall had pretty good reviews. Most notably people were really taken by the color story here. This interesting green, gray, khaki shade, as well as a new formula which is Galaxia which was her, I guess it's like a diamond lid topper formula. Now, if you guys watched my live a few weeks ago, I showed you the sneak peeks of this palette. I showed it before this was actually revealed. Don't tell anybody. But if you're there for the live, you guys are my MVPs. That's why I showed you. But anyways, I was like not into those leaked pictures. They looked very warm, very red. I was like, ugh, and had absolutely no correlation at all to the mini retro. And while I still do think that these are different distant relatives, I can kind of see the inspiration in terms of the tone. That being said, I don't think that they're very similar at all. I envisioned the retro palette to be something different. I did read that she said she wasn't done with the retro color story and that there was something bolder and brighter coming, more unique. Don't take my word for that, but that's just what I heard. Anyways, doesn't look like the mini retro to me. However, I really like this palette and I was very excited when the pro pictures launched of this because it looked a lot more mauve a lot more purple, and I was really hoping it looked like the promo pics, and it does. It's not that bright red kind of look that we saw from those leaked pictures. It truly is more of a mauve color story, and if you're new here, that's my kind of color story. I had so many of you tag me like, Morgan, we know you're gonna love this, and you're right. This color story caught my eye, arguably, one of my favorite color stories to have come from Natasha Denona. This palette and the Glam palette, both are beautiful. Both are the kind of color stories that I like. While I wish she had kind of named this something else, the color story itself looks stunning. So taking a deeper dive in the colors here, this is a 15 pan eyeshadow palette. It's featuring 15 romantic burgundy and mauve shades combined with gray browns, which I don't really see too much of that. But anyways, taupes, dusty roses, and vintage pinks supposed to create a romantic retro inspired kind of look. You know, it's a mauve palette, it has some berries, it has some pinks. Taking a look at the textures here and on the box actually itself that you get this in, it has a nice guide of each of the shades and what formulation you're getting. As far as the unique formulations here, you have one duochrome shade which is Glitz and then you're gonna have one diamond shade which is psychedelic which is that new formula that she introduced in the mini retro but I do think this one feels better. It looks like there are three metallic shades Jude, Patty, and 
Helio. Now I will say on the carton it says that patty is a creamed powder and I missed that in my tutorial but I just want to confirm that this is actually a metallic. It's just mislabeled on the box. Uh, but patty is not really super shiny. It's a little bit more subdued. I wouldn't necessarily call it metallic. It's more so of a subtle shimmer but just keep that in mind. Helio and Jude are true metallics. There are six creamed powder formulations. That's going to be Andy, Opart, Go Go, Vivian, Rebellion, just JK, there's five, but those are the five. A lot of people are afraid of that formula. Don't be. She's improved them from the first time that she launched them and they got a bad rep. She's improved that formulation. While they might take a little bit of building up, they're extremely easy to work with, extremely easy to blend out, and extremely easy to build up. I love this formula from her. She added five, so it could have gone downhill if it was bad. But I'm going to confirm for you guys that the creamed powders are really good. And then the remaining shades are going to be just the the regular creamy matte shades which is going to give you immediate impact on the eye still very easy to blend just a different style of application go in with a different level of strength in your hand and just be aware that you're gonna get a little bit more with those matte shadows if I forgot to mention this palette is cruelty free paraben free and is made in Italy likewise with her other palettes I have hit my main talking points on this palette, so I'm going to take you straight to the tutorial where you can see the colors in action and I talk about the formulations and how they apply. So if you're new here, when I do my makeup reviews, typically the look I do isn't super special. I just do it in such a way that I can try as many shades as possible. If you want to see some looks and feel inspired, then stay tuned because in a few days I will be uploading a three looks one palette with this palette. So you'll see some more of how I would use this palette but I mean it's a pretty look regardless so let's get into it using the tip of my blending brush we are going into mod it's a cream shade with a pinky undertone very happy that she added this shade because it highlights the brow bone perfectly but it can also be a great all-over lid color if you're creating an all matte look. So I'm very happy she added this shade. It's very, very functional. With a BK Beauty 201, we are going into Nude Mauve. Again, a great addition to this palette. It's going to be a color that you probably use a lot as that transitional shade. It has a cooler undertone to it, so it's going to be great for contouring the eye. I will say, if you are recreating this look, you're actually going to want to put it in the outer half of the crease as opposed to the inner. This is the way I did it on my eye, and you'll see why in a second. I wipe my brush off. Now we are going into Andy. I really wanted to test out this cream to powder formula. So the Nude Mauve I found pulls deeper. And this Andy shade I found pulls a little bit brighter on my skin tone. So I would reverse where I applied these two shades if I were you replicating this look. Regardless, this cream to powder is amazing because there's zero fallout. And it gives you just enough pigment. It's very beginner friendly. Might have to build it up a little bit, but that's better than having it to over apply. It's very easy to work out. I think it's worth it for how much ease there is with blending. So you can actually do a brighter look with this shade which I absolutely love. Going into GoGo -Go now, this one has a little bit more warmth to it. It's almost a little bit more peachy. If you can hear a dog barking, I am dog sitting my cousin's dog, Winston. I'll let you that that did not sound like a dog bark. It sounded like a bird outside, right? Like, arr, arr. Oh, Jose thinks it sounded like a bird. I think it sounded like something haunted. Anyways, that was Winston <laughs> misbehaving. Okay, back to the video. Um, and here's the kids playing outside, but I'm putting this in the inner corner. These creamed powders are just so great because they're completely mess free. You can see it is a lighter wash, but can be easily built up. I'm using an Esom V33, by the way. Then we're going to deepen up with Amaro, which is just a regular matte, and that's going in the outer half of the lower lash line. This palette has an interesting mix of warms and cools where they all work together. It's very odd. I like it because of those berry tones, which berry is so easy to be able to lean warm or cool and they just all work together. Taking an Olimar Detailed Diffuser, we are now going into Groove and we're just really defining pretty close to the lash line and focusing it in the outer corner of the lash line like so. Make it a little bit smoky. Now my only critique really color story wise is I feel like some of the shades are a little bit too close. I wish some other shades 
could have been added for more variety. For example, like Groove and Rebellion and Amara. There's three different shades of a deeper warm color. I don't know, I just feel like a little bit more variety could be added because if you take a look at the mini retro, there are some different pops of pink and almost like a khaki green gray. I would have loved to have seen more plays with grays or some... <laughs> Just not three warm berry shades, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, we're going into Rebellion now, which is a creamy matte. It's a creamed powder, excuse me, but I really wanted to see how the pigmentation would work with this because looking at it in pan, it's the second deepest shade in the palette and it's amazing, you guys. You can see I have zero fallout and it really is building beautifully. It's giving me that depth. I'm running it in through my crease. I'm gonna take a fluffier brush and we're gonna blend out the edges. And as Natasha Denona's formula should, works out with ease, little to no effort was necessary. Next up, I had to play in a part. Now, this is one of the more greeny, grey tones. We have a part in Jude right here, which are gonna lean more grey. This is a unique shade. I feel like I don't have a lot of shades like this because while it's greyish, you can see that kind of plummy, ashy tone there to it. And I'm putting this right in the outer corners and that's going to bring us some depth. Don't forget to blend. And it almost blends in with that berry color to create a plum look. With a rougher number 12 brush, I'm using Patty. Now, Patty's interesting. It's a cream to powder. However, it does have a little bit of sheen to it. It's very, very subtle, but I wanted to use Patty because... Hi, Patty Alonso. <laughs> this shade is for you. But it just has slight shimmer. Honestly, very, very subtle. I know those of you who don't like anything metallic, you actually might really like this shade. And that also added some warmth down here, really pretty. All right, I mean, was I going to create a look without using these two shades right here? So I'm gonna start off with Glitz right here. This one is a little bit more pink with a goldish shift and not using any glitter glue or anything, just my finger. I'm gonna apply this to the center of my lid. I love glitter shadows. I love a lot of dimension. So I had to use these on my eyelid to really judge the formula. And it's not my favorite shade. It wasn't giving me as much as I wanted. I wish it pulled almost a little bit more pink and had more of a base to it. Uh, still very, very pretty. Great quality sticking to the eyelid. I don't have any follow. I'm just kind of cleaning it up here. Absolutely gorgeous. Just wish it looked a little bit more pink on the eyelid. And then we are going into Psychedelic, which is one of her new diamond shades. I believe she introduced this formula with the mini retro because that is what Galaxia is. I'd argue Psychedelic though feels like a better version of it. It just feels a little bit more creamy, like it's going to lay down more color. So I think she actually upped the formula with this one just a little bit. It has a silky feel to it. And she said this is almost like a lid topper. However, I do find that it has more of a pigmented base than I was expecting. I think it still works better as a lid topper, but if you put it on your naked lid, it's going to cover the skin right there. And you can see the difference between the two shades. I was worried they'd be too similar, but you can definitely see that difference in depth and the different sparkles. Psychedelic definitely has more fine sparkles and it looks more silky and smooth on the lid. Both shades are great on their own. That's just the differences that I'm noticing on the eyelid between the two because they did have potential to be very, very similar, but they're not. Pretty impressed with that. I did pretty good. I used 11 of the 15 shades. Wow. All right, I'm gonna put on liner and lashes. But first, you guys, I posted my Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate blush review earlier. I'm gonna feature them in this video as well because I paid $90 for them. So we're gonna talk about them. <laughs> if you wanna see my review on them, check out my most recent upload. Normally I'd use a Natasha Denona blush, but not today. I'm gonna use this side of the sun drunk. So these are the shade and illuminate blushes that just came out from Tom Ford using a Flower Beauty blush brush. How pretty is that? Really gorgeous. Listen, I'm never ever ever going to tell you to spend $90 on a blush. <laughs> you don't need to, but they're a very pretty formula if you missed my review. Okay, 
I'm gonna finish the look and by this point you guys have already <laughs> seen it. I turned the lights down because I'm about to do some comparisons. So it's no secret that this color story, while as beautiful as I'm saying it is and how much I love it, you know, it's, it's been done before, but I mean, what hasn't been done before at this point? I did just wanna compare it to a few palettes that this reminded me of and what I thought you guys would be interested in, but there are already a ton of amazing comparisons that I didn't even think of. So make sure you do your research to see if you have similar tones and to see if this would be worth it for you. For me, even though I have these tones over and over and over again, I'm very happy to have this style of color story in my collection in a Natasha Denona formula. So that for me is where this color story has value. But let's see, okay? When I first saw this, especially that leaked photo, I thought this looks like the Love palette. It looks like her sister. So I have the Love palette here, which is the one on top. And basically I would say these look like Cousin. Definitely the Love palette is the brighter version. This is the Wild Cousin and it really makes the Retro palette look so much more wearable. I did swatch them side by side though, so that you could kind of see. So right here is going to be the Retro palette and here are some similar shades from the Love palette. Now there are similar shades but really I think you're going to get different looks from each of the palettes. The only really similar shades are these kind of warm tone shades. The rest I do find to be different. Like I said they look related but the Love Palette is just a little bit crazier. And here's the thing with the Love Palette. It is on sale for $32 on Sephora. I'm not sure if it's still in stock, but $32 is a great deal for this. But anyways, this is a little bit more inconsistent. This cream to powder is like awful. There's a couple bad formulas in here, but a couple of great ones. The color story I love. So this was actually one of my most used Natasha Denona palettes. I love it, I recommend it, but it's not perfect. This one quality wise is much more reliable and I think it's more wearable, it's more user friendly. So I think those two are different, but those are kind of the comparisons that I have. And I didn't do these side by side because I really don't think there are any similar shades, but if you wanted a closer look at the mini retro to the retro, here you go. See, they're like different, okay. <laughs> The next palette that came in mind to me was the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties in terms of that grungy kind of cooler toned purple. I think this is a better way to look at it. And honestly, when I look at them side by side, I'm like, you know, these actually look very similar. They're the same vibe, but they're different palettes. I could not find anything that really matched. This is the Melt side over here. This is the Natasha side. None of the shades are close at all. The Melt Cosmetics formulation is so so different. It pulls so different than the Natasha Denona on the skin. Literally no comparisons. Like these two together look like they could join one, you know? No dupes, but they're the exact same vibes. Take of that what you will, but I couldn't find any similar colors. Okay, this is the last one that I'm going to compare today, but it definitely reminded of my trusty Paris Edit palette from Busy Arts. I've loved this for so long. It's one of my favorites from them. So here they are side by side. Again, very similar color stories. There's a little bit more peach shades in the Busy Arts, but these again look like they could become one palette. So you can see my arm's getting messy, but I added the Busy Art shades. Some similar shades, I'm not gonna lie. There's a few, but again, it's that weird situation where they're the same vibe. They're definitely family, but there's no twins in the family. So, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> those are my comparisons. Let's get into my final thoughts. If you can't tell, I really am enjoying this palette. In terms of quality, I don't think you will be disappointed to this. If you have some sort of aversion to the cream to powder formula, I don't think this is the one for you. But I love the formula. I think it works great. I love the color stories. I don't have too many negatives to say if I'm being picky. Okay, maybe a few of the shades are a bit redundant. She could have added something else to add a little bit more variety to this palette because it is really a monochromatic palette. But 
no, quality wise, it's perfect. And that is so important to me. If you like the colors in here, because color story is a personal thing, I do think this is great. It just depends if you feel like you need it in your collection. If you think it's going to be valuable to you. For me, I am very, very happy with this. This is definitely a palette where if I didn't do this channel, if I didn't review products for you guys, I would still pick this up for myself because it's a great color story. It's great quality. I am going to have a lot of fun with this. So if you want to see more from this palette and if you want to hear kind of my more finalized thoughts as I use this palette more, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. I will have a few looks with this palette in the next video. Hopefully this weekend I can get that filmed, but I have a good feeling about this one. <laughs> so that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for being subscribed to me and liking this video. I very much appreciate it. It helps me so much. Let me know your thoughts on this palette. Did you pick it up? Are you interested? If you have any questions, make sure to ask it in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.